Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 192 of Weekly Poker Hand. I want to thank you all for being here with me today. If you have not already, make sure you check out my educational poker site, pokercoaching.com. There we have a lot of interactive hand quizzes, very similar to Weekly Poker Hand, except for instead of telling you what I do, I make you tell me what you would do and then give you critiques on that. So it's completely free to sign up for a one-week trial. Also, we are now giving away credits and bonuses for people who go through and complete a lot of quizzes. So go there, play the quizzes, test yourself, and get better at the game. So check that out at pokercoaching.com. Here, today, we are playing in a $3,000 buy-in tournament, 3,000, 6,000 blinds with 300,000 chips. So we have about 50 big blinds. We get ace-queen offsuit in the hijack seat and open it up to 14,000, which I think is just good and standard. And then it's going to fold around to someone who I, I have labeled as a kid in the big blind who calls. Now, a lot of kids are somewhat splashy, somewhat loose aggressive, but at the same time, good. So the flop comes 9-5-4. And if you remember back to last week's episode where I had pocket queens on, I think it was 8 7 Five. This 954 board may look very similar, but it's actually way less coordinated. On the other board, our opponent had, if they had a six, they just had a straight draw, right? They could also very easily have eight seven, whereas here a lot of people don't play nine five for top two pair. Also, way more people play, you know, um, eight seven, eight five, and seven five than nine five, nine four, and five four. So, although this board also contains middle cards, it's much more uncoordinated than the previous one. So for that reason, I should be continuation betting more often as the preflop raiser. So it's not the greatest board of continuation bets, but I do think I need to be betting a pretty good chunk of the time. Ace-Queen is a hand that may or may, not, may or may not be able to win at showdown if it checks down. And here, whatever my opponent has, has plenty of equity against me. So I don't really mind making him fold out any of that, those hands that have some equity. Whereas in the previous episode, remember, go back and watch or listen to that. Um, I had pocket queens, and a lot of my opponent's hands are going to be drawing really thin. Here, whatever my opponent has, has at least live cards, right? So I want to bet, and if I pick up the pot, that's fine. I decide to use a small bet. If I make a bigger bet, I don't think my opponent's ever folding a better hand, right? Like, no one's folding a pair. I mean, maybe they fold threes and twos. But even then, I'm not making a whole lot of hands fold that are better than me. So when I'm making the small bet, I'm mainly just betting for protection. Now, a lot of people think protection is not a good reason to bet, and it's not if you're betting big. But if you're betting small, notice here I'm betting two big blinds into a six big blind pot. If we make our opponent fold anything like King Jack or 10-2, I'm fine with that because all those hands have some equity. Plus, those hands are often going to bluff me and I'm not going to be able to withstand their bluffs. So I use a small bet and I would bet small here with my whole range that I am going to be betting with. So I do bet 12 and the opponent calls. So when he calls, I don't necessarily think he has me beat or anything like that. I do think he has... A reasonable range. Like, I don't think he's just going to be floating with, well, 10-2 offsuit, right? That's not so practical. But if he has any backdoor flush draw or two overcars or some sort of backdoor flush draw or anything like that, he's definitely going to call a 12,000 bet if he's good. As he should, because he's getting great pot odds. So the turn is a jack of spades. So the board is now nine of spades, five of clubs, four of diamonds, jack of spades. I have ace of spades, queen of hearts, and my opponent checks. Now I have to ask myself, if I bet again, can I start to make my opponent fold out some nines, fives, or fours? Obviously, no one's going to fold a jack, but I'm not so worried about the jack. Because some people do fold in hands like jack 10 on the flop, although they should probably float with that too. So, if we bet, can we make our opponent fold nines, fives, or fours? Not necessarily only on the turn, but also with the river bets. When I do bet here, I am certainly planning to continue barreling. I'm not just betting one time and being done with it. So let's see if we go for it. I do think this is a fine spot to barrel, by the way. So pot's 59,000. I bet 28,000 for half pot. And when I make this bet, I can pretty much tell you I'm going to be betting something like 80,000 on a lot of rivers, trying to get the opponent to fold out a lot of hands. And I would do this exact same play with a hand like a jack or an overpair or a set. And taking this line is just generally going to put your opponent in a pretty nasty spot with a lot of his range because most of his range should be a nine or worse. Whereas my range, when I go bet, 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 should be something like a good nine or better. And if you look at those two ranges, my, I have a very big range advantage. 
And here my opponent really shouldn't have a whole lot of nut hands because a lot of people three bet jacks preflop. Some people three bet nines. I mean, some people three bet fives and fours. So I'm not so worried about my opponent having a really strong range here. Whenever you have the range advantage and also have more premium hands in your range, that's a great spot to bet frequently, which kind of implies you're betting with a lot of bluffs. Now, this ace queen may be good enough just to check down. And you do want to find some hands you want to check down with. But in this spot, I would be checking down mostly with my weak nines, like nine, six suited if I opened it. And then stuff like ace five, ace four, pocket sixes, etc. Those are hands you're going to want to check back. And then with some of your just total garbage, you may want to give up. Um, I'm probably going to be betting with a lot of my draws. But if I had some random, I'm trying to even think of some random hand I could even have here, like ace three, I would probably just give up with that. Although maybe I would, maybe I would bluff with that too. I guess it, it does have a gut shot, so... It's kind of hard to find too many hands I'm actually giving up with here. So if my opponent knows that, what does that mean? Well, it means he should fold if I bet, if I check behind on the turn. Or if I check behind on the turn, I should have a lot of medium strength hands. Therefore, he should play well. But when I bet the turn, it certainly puts him in a bad spot. That is what I do. Let's see if we keep going on the river. Oh, well, he just folds. <laughs> Sometimes they just fold on the turn. You don't have to go for the river bet. Um, some people may look at this and say, well, if he called your turn bet, he was ob obviously going to call any river bet. And I don't think that's true either. A lot of people will call the turn with pretty much any made hand, like any pair, looking to either improve on the river or fold some portion of that range on the river. So don't be afraid to keep going for it. Again, I think by the river, this ace-queen is probably not going to be good enough to check it back. It does beat some of the draws. Like let's say our opponent did float with queen 10. He's probably going to check call or maybe check raise the turn. And we beat queen 10 on the river if it goes check check. Also we beat 7, 6, etc. But I do think there are going to be enough 9s, 5s, and 4s we want to continue barreling. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. Again, thank you all for being here. If you enjoyed this podcast, tell your friends. That is by far the best thing you can do for me to help spread the word and help me out. So tell everyone. Thanks again, good luck in your games, and I will talk to you next week.